Air Force, they assume, they demand mm. that in order to get promoted, you not only have uh, outside academic uh, education, but you also have to have air education has to continue. Remember, I told you in basic training, you learn the ranks and you learn the mission of the Air Force and all that. Well, that goes on. So first you go to squadron officer school. So I was a squadron officer. I went to school at, out at Tinker and it was a class and you learned about um, the history of the Air Force and uh, what you need to do as a new commander and what you have to do. You know. And so then you do a command and staff college when you're... Um, major going to lieutenant colonel and um, you learn more about the missions that the air force competes in and how they're in then you move to air war college in order to be qualified to make colonel well i didn't really think i had a chance at making colonel because i wasn't a flyer but i went to school anyway that was the secret that i told all the airmen that i worked with you've got to have your your college education, but you've also got to have your military education. Do the next level before you're ready to be promoted so that you're ready when they have someone to pick out. And it was that way when I uh, did command and staff college. I made lieutenant colonel at minimum time because I had all my ducks in a row. I had done all my professional military training. I had done all of my, my technical training. So, yeah, in Air War College, you're talking about upper-level management. You're talking about a lot of military history, which I was not good at. We, we formed a group. We did it um, uh, by email. We, we, we took the courses. We studied them together. Each one would present, every night we had six or seven of us in the class. Each night we met, we would take a chapter, we would present that chapter. Of course, that was easy for me. That was right up my alley. So um, we, and then we would take the test, which was grueling, grueling, because there was so much material they would cover in there. And we not only covered in that, just the Air Force, but how the Air Force interacted with other branches of the service, mm -hmm. Navy and Army in particular. Uh, so, it, yeah, it was... Uh, I, I'd taken college courses that weren't nearly as tough as that. <laughs> and I, working on my master's. When I, now, when I went to work on my doctorate, that was a whole different ballgame. Uh, I did statistical analysis and said, that's enough for me, I'm done. <laughs> I was, it was not my forte. I don't need a doctor. I, I don't, I don't need name. a doctor. Yeah. Well, and that was just the time I was going into working full time at the, yeah. at the air guard office. And I said, nah, I don't need that. I'm not going back to that. So it's not worth my time. Not, uh, not worth my grief. <laughs> and my husband at the time, Greg Aragon, who is a mathematical genius. He is, he is undoubtedly the smartest man I ever knew. I mean, he, he read voraciously. He remembered everything he read and he would read my stuff for my uh, working on my doctorate, and he'd say, this is so easy. This is so, come on, you can do this. And I'm going like, but I can't, I don't memorize well. Right. I'm, a, I'm a big picture person. I'm a generalist, mm -hmm. literally a generalist. And so having to memorize uh, theorems and theories and which, which, program do I use for this? It's all done by computer. I don't need to know that. He goes like, you have to learn it. They told you you have to learn it. So he was right. And I didn't. So I quit my doctorate. Yeah. yeah. I had 10 hours and a dissertation to go. And now I would have to start all over again. So, and I'm too old for that. The brain won't hold. It's like a sieve now. It just kind of goes <laughs> through. And I remember small, minute particles of what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm.